Hey guys, Desolate Magic here, so I'm still a little bit behind on the spoilers, but we're going to jump into the September 7th batch. Hopefully sometime tomorrow I'll have the 8th done, considering it's the 9th. So I've been really busy with another project, it's been making a lot of money, so I'm doing that. There's really not much more to that. So first up we got Vanquish the Horde. It's a eight cost white sorcery. Hello. This spell costs one less to cast though for each creature on the battlefield and then destroy all creatures. It has been a hot minute since we have had a scaling uh, board wipe that cares about how many creatures are in play. Do I think that's a good or bad thing? I'm not even sure. I mean, the more you want to blow up, the less it should cost. No, wait. The more you want to blow up, the more it should cost because you're blowing up more things yeah I, I don't know my main issue with this is you can get it down to two and no white board wipe or really any board wipe should cost two that's ridiculous so i actually kind of hate this card next up flare of faith it's a two cost instant uh target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn if it's a human instead it gets plus three plus three and gains indestructible so you know it's in the common spot it's gonna absolutely win you a draft might be good enough for constructed especially if you're doing human tribal but uh, human tribal looks like it's gonna kind of blow Next up, Startled. It's a two-cost blue instant, and uh, target creature gets negative two attack until end of turn, and then create a two-two black zombie creature token with Decayed. But then also draw a card. So, I mean, that that is three things for two mana. And instant speed. That's pretty good. Next, we've got Old Stick Fingers. That's just a cool name. Um, it's a one green plus one black plus X. Legendary Creature Horror. So when you cast this spell, reveal cards from the top of your library until you've revealed X creature cards. Okay. Put all creature cards revealed this way in your graveyard. Okay, what if you're running like a two creature deck? I don't even know what that would be, but this just seems like it's exploitable. Anytime they do that and you're only going to hit one, it's basically Char Belcher or Char Belcher adjacent. And Char Belcher is complete ass cancer. So anyway... Yeah, put all creature cards revealed this way into your graveyard, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, old stick fingers, power, and toughness are each equal to the number of cards, or uh, pardon me, creature cards, that would be insane if it was cards, in your graveyard. So this is how you feed your graveyard to do the El Zombly deck, which uh, I guess 2.0 is coming around, and this time with 100% less Eldrazi. But still, there's some things you might want to resurrect, and there's some very easy, cheap resurrection cards, which... Uh, you know, mix it with this, that's a bad combination. Never did like that from the graveyard over and over and over. You know, a huge giant resurrection early, didn't really pay for it archetype. But, well, here it is. So next up we've got Necrosynthesis, the two-cost black enchantment aura, enchanted creature. And enchanted creature has whenever another creature dies, put a 1-1 counter on this creature. So kind of like Stab Wound, except not nearly as good. But when enchanted creature dies, look at the top X cards of your library where X is its power. Nice. And then put one of those cards in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. It's kind of like a scry with a post draw and it scales to the size of the creature. So, I mean, if you just lost something, you want to rush to replace it. So that's kind of neat, actually. Not the most amazing card, but still good. Um, by the way, are we going to see the power level drop in this whole set? Because, I mean, we've seen that ridiculous doubler, and I think one or two more egregious cards, which is, you know, low for them. But the rest of these are just like, oh yeah, okay, you know. I mean, the Werewolf Tribal with the Arlen Planeswalker, that deck is out of control, bonkers, batshit crazy. And one of the boosts, uh, the, the either mono green or green red boosts, I don't remember, just nuts. But if you take those out, I, I think this looks pretty tame for a set. And we've been looking for them to reset the power level. So are we going to see it? And my guess is yes. Wizards has had enough time after they massively screwed up the power level to fix this. So uh, next up, we got Ghoul Grizzly. It's a uh, four-cost black-green Orso zombie. Oh, it's in, not English. Uh, Orso is probably Ursa in Latin, which is bear. So, you know, there you go. I don't speak Italian, but I, like, almost speak Italian. So it has Trample, and then it enters the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it for each creature that died this turn, but it's already a 4-3, so that could get really scary really quick. It's situational, it's hyper-powerful, it's a gold card. I mean, this is how you design a high-powered card, right here. Without, like, making it obnoxious or completely breaking everything. Well, that's the one Italian card. I guess wizards can go back to not caring about small uh, European countries again. For at least another three months. Uh, so next up we've got Root Coil Creeper. It's a blue-green uh, plant horror 2-2. Two, two. You can tap it for one man of any color. So that's right off the bat really amazing. But you can also tap it for 
two mana of any one color, but spend it only to cast spells from your graveyard, which is still pretty good. By the way, pardon my sore throat today. Uh, then we've got one green, one blue, and tap it. And then exile root coil creeper. Uh, return target card with flashback you own from exile to your hand. So you can cast it in theory another two times because you would cast it, put it in your graveyard, then flash it back again. So this is by far the biggest, best flashback enabler in the game right now, uh, at least in standard. So, wow. Next up, Dire Strain Rampage, because we needed another giant werewolf boost card, apparently. So this is uh, one green, one red, one generic. Sorcery, rare. Here we go. Destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. Really, land, because that troll saga deck needed help. Really. Great. If a land was destroyed this way, oh, it's controlling my searcher library for up to two basic land cards? Oh, you'd almost just target your own damn land then. Holy crap, yeah, don't blow up an opponent's. Jeez. Uh, put them onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Otherwise, it's controlling my searcher library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. So it is its controller, so if you target your own land, you can go get two. If you target their land, they're just going to replace it with a basic land. Okay. Or wait, no, that's not true. Uh, they would go get two. It's if you blow up a land. It doesn't matter whose it is, that person goes to get two. So if you blow up an artifact or enchantment, then they go to get one land. This is just not a good card. Although I feel like I have to be missing something. This has to serve some purpose other than draft, obviously, because it's a rare. They obviously thought very highly of this. Now, I mean, three at sorcery speed to take out an artifact or enchantment with splash green on there? When you could just run naturalize or a really similar card like Broken Wings... I don't see it. I mean, flashback five. Okay, cool, great. But, like, you're going to give them a land. Anytime you give an opponent a land, you accelerate them three turns because one in three cards in their deck is a land. So every three turns from, you know, from the start, they should pull a land. You know, without assistance, without scry, without land fetching, without, you know, there's all these exemptions. But in general, that is the truth. So you will get them to a four, five, six, or seven cost spell three turns earlier if you do this. So it, was it worth removing the enchantment or artifact? I could name a lot of enchantments where the answer is yes, like Skeletal Swarming. That card needs to be banned immediately. But in general, I would say no. So I don't know what they were thinking with this. Is this just landfall werewolf self-targeting ramp i i don't get this well it's two in the morning and i'm tired and i probably read it wrong so who cares let's move on ritual of hope it's a two cost instant in white creatures you control get plus one plus one dull end of turn gotta get that big wide boosty boy and then coven if you control three or more uh creatures different powers then your creatures of uh, the creatures you control get plus two plus one until end of turn instead I mean, yeah they're usually bigger spells that cost a little bit more mana this one's smaller with a condition on it so it just is what it is. I don't think it's very good, honestly. Next up, Adeline Katara Splendente. Muy bien. Oh, we have another uh, Italian card. It's actually not Spanish. <laughs> well, obviously, that's uh, Adeline Splendid Cathar. And it's a three-cost double white legendary creature human knight. Nice. Vigilance. Fantastic. And uh, it's star four, and its power is equal to the number of creatures you control. So another classic Westfail card that gets uh, bigger based on the size of the army. So, I, I mean, we all knew this was coming. Then, uh, whenever you attack for each opponent, create a 1-1 one, one white human creature uh, token tapped in attacking that player or a planeswalker they control. So, it makes itself bigger, and this starts at 3. Okay, this is kind of nuts. Still just garbage compared to the mono white angels deck right now, because something needs to be done about that damn thing. But uh, other than that, yeah, this is... Wow absolute swarm enabler bonkers ass card next up we've got siphon insight it's a one blue one black instant uh, another rare card oh boy look at the top two cards of uh, uh, target opponent's library pardon me uh exile one of them face down and put the other on the bottom of uh their library uh you may look at and play the exile card for as long as it remains exile but of course your opponent can't see it uh, and you may spend mana as though or any mana or mana of any color to copy that spell and then flashback three. So you know what? Keep your hands off my deck. Keep your hands on my graveyard. Keep your hands off my creatures. Keep your damn hands to yourself, you stupid bitch. Sincerely, everyone in the community is sick of this shit. This is literally just Xanathar Jr., okay? F*** this card. Really? Flashback three, two? Really? So next up we got Ambitious Farmhand. It's a two cost one one and as it enters the battlefield you may search your library for a basic planes card. Nice. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. And then Coven, uh, I guess pay three, that's weird. So you have to have Coven, you have to qualify, 
And then you pay two white, one generic to transform Ambitious hard, uh, far, Farmhand and then activate only if you control three more creatures with different powers, thus the, the coven part. And on the back, it's a seasoned Cathar, so it's just a 3-3 with lifelink. So, not a good card. It's close to a good card, but not close enough. Uh, next up, we got Rise of the Ants. Okay, what is going on here? What does this have to do with anything? This is just weird. So it's a six cost green sorcery. Create two three three green insect creature tokens. You gain two life and then flashback eight. I've seen better uses of mana and green, but I mean flashback. Next up, we've got a mythic colorless land. Okay. And it flips over. It's called Hostile Hostile. Apparently we're in an unset. Tap it for one generic, cool, but if you pay one, tap it, sack a creature, put a soul counter on Hostile Hostile. Then if there are three or more soul counters on it, remove those counters, transform it, then untap it, activate only at sorcery speed. So you have to get three things killed, but if you do, you get Creeping In, which is a 3-7, and whenever it attacks, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life, where X is the number of creature cards exiled with Creeping In, so it'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until uh, you run out of creature cards in your graveyard, and then if you pay 4, Creeping In phases out. I'd say it's a bit of a disappointment after that build-up, but obviously you just put three creatures into your graveyard, so now you can start building this up, but... It would take, what, five, six, seven, eight turns to get this going? I mean, this is pretty stupid. Uh, next up, we got Bloodthirsty Adversary. It's a two cost, two, two creature vampire with haste. And when it enters the battlefield, wow, that's some tiny text and a lot of it. Uh, you may pay three uh, any number of times. Oh, it's the adversary card, duh, it's part of the cycle. Uh, when you pay this cost one or more times, also known as multi kicker, put that many plus one plus one counters on Bloodthirsty Adversary, then exile up to that many. Target instant or sorcery cards with mana value three or less from your graveyard and copy them. You may cast the uh, any number of copies without paying their mana cost. So, uh, I mean, would a true red burn red winds uh, in a red rush deck have five mana? Probably not. And then for three more, you get one extra burn spell. Oh boy. I mean, I don't know. None of these adversaries seem, like, all that good. Like, they seem fun and interesting, but not, like, all-powerful. So, I mean, hey, I'll take that over Broken any day, but they are kind of disappointing. Next up, did not see this one coming, Mask of Grizzlebrand. Is that made out of his actual skull? You might remember that uh, Liliana and the rest of the uh, Powerpuff Girl squad killed Grizzlebrand on the last episode of, uh, I don't remember where they were when they killed him. I would have said Amon Cat, I don't know, probably in Estrad. Why else would his mask be here? Whatever. He, either way, he's dead. Oh, the one on Dominaria was Billy. Oh, but what, wait, what was the one on Amon Cat? You know what? All the demons are dead. So anyway, this is a uh, double black single generic legendary artifact equipment. Black aligned, obviously. And equipped creature is flying and lifelink. So that's huge. And then whenever equipped creature dies, you may pay X life, or X is its power if you do draw X cards. So it has to be exactly that. And then equip three. So... This is really powerful, but it doesn't boost the creature. And then if it dies, I guess the theory is you're going to move this around and try and get stuff killed, whatever. You know, it's expendable. Then you get to draw a ton of cards, but risk losing the game because your life total will get absolutely kicked in the balls. Kind of interesting, kind of a gamble. Um, I kind of like it. Uh, next up, we got Diagraph Horde. It's a five cost, three, four zombie. And when it enters the battlefield, create two black, uh, two, two zombies with decayed. And then when you do, exile up to two target cards. Uh, cards from any graveyards so you could clear theirs while you uh get a crappy garbage three four and a two two that you can use once wow next up dryad's revival it's a three cost uh green sorcery and that's of course ren and i'm not kidding seven he named his trees numbers uh so return target card from your graveyard to your hand and then flashback five well, there you go. I mean, there's some things in green where when I finally kill them, I want them to stay dead, like that stupid Phyrexian asshole. Vorin Klex, if you haven't been paying attention. So this will just give him back, and then flashback, give him back again. So I have to kill the same stupid broken piece of shit three times. God help you if it's a giant creature with hexproof. And that's the problem. Too good of creatures. There's nothing wrong with this inherently. Eh, maybe the fact that it costs three, then five, and you can use it twice, but okay. The problem is the obnoxious cards that are impossible to remove, or next to impossible to remove, or too difficult to remove. Or like even Faceless Haven. You just go get it back with this. It just says target card. And remember, they already have the four-cost spell that can go get either 
um, one permanent card out of your your uh, graveyard, put it back in your hand, or two lands from your uh, library and put them in your hand. So just having that option, you can go get an Evolving Wilds, get a double trigger on Landfall, you can go get some Hexproof Monstrosity. It just Between the two, it's too much crap from the graveyard, but they're probably thinking, oh, but because this is coming out, everybody's going to run Graveyard Wiping. Well, I don't want to waste space in my deck for that garbage that does nothing to progress my deck and has no synergy with the rest of my deck just because I have to stop all the broken graveyard shit. So, yeah, the, the whole Graveyard Resurrection, oh, but don't worry, you can clear the Graveyard with 10 different cards. That whole scene, I'm super not into it. I think they made a fairly significant design mistake there, and they just kind of went, oh, what's the lore and what's the flavor of the plane? Oh, okay, let's do it, whether it was a good idea or not. So, it is what it is. Next up, oh, great, it's Delver of Secrets, one of my most hated cards of all time. So this asshole, for some reason, is still legal in every format. And of course they printed him at Uncommon because why would they not? So Captain Asshole here is a 1-1 human wizard for one, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card. If an instant or sorcery card is revealed that way, then transform him, so that won't take long. And then he's a 3-2 flyer, which for one blue... In the right, or let's be honest, wrong deck, or any kind of is it knockoff deck, or any kind of blue hyper control deck. Yeah, that's a lot of flying damage on top of the fact that you're already running like a control deck or a spell spam storm deck. I hate this thing, you hate this thing, we all hate this thing. So, was it Pithing Needle or was it this that Mark was talking about? I don't even know. This looks like a fifth artwork to me. I don't know, I'm not gonna count. I hate this thing. It probably was Pithing Needle, but I didn't want this back in standard either. In fact, I want this banned for modern. It, it's just annoying. It's not even like the math isn't so egregious. I just hate the card. I just personally dislike this card to an extent that you cannot possibly imagine. Mono blue should not be swinging in the air on turn two for three. Okay, it just should not do that, period. So next up, we've got a Mystic Skull. It's a two-drop artifact. You pay one, tap it, add one mana of any color. So it's basically a filter. And then if you pay five, transform it. And it turns into Mystic Monstrosity, a 5-6. And lands you control of tap, add one mana of any color. Because five-color team mad dragons needed to get even worse. So the fact that it's a filter doesn't really help anything, unless it's already a five-color deck. So obviously, pretty good commander card, I guess. And then a 5-6, I mean, damn, but you're paying five for it. So, pretty good card in the right deck, pretty bad card in the average deck, so, uh, you know, whatever. Next up, we got Curse of Surveillance. I think we all wish that would happen to Facebook one way or another. But it's a, a five-cost uh, aura curse in blue, and you enchant player. And then at the beginning of enchanted player's upkeep, any number of target players other than that player, each draw cards equal to the number of curses attached to that player. Holy crap. As if curses weren't bad enough, not that there's that many of them in the game, let alone in standard... Now you're going to let everyone but them outdraw them two to one. Like, this is a crushing commander card, and this is actually still pretty damn good in standard. A curse drain away, uh, like, control deck might be pretty good, but I'm going to have to see how many curses we actually land on and what colors there. And remember, this one costs five. I mean, that's uh, kind of up there. Next, we've got Sacred Fire. It's a uh, one white, one red instant. Sacred Fire deals two damage to any target, and you gain two life. So, in other words, Lightning Helix. And then it has Flashback Six. Okay, okay, Lightning Helix is three and three. This is only two and two, but this has Flashback. Well, the difference in creature removal ability of three versus two, yeah, this is actually significantly worse, and six is outrageous for Flashback. So, next up, we have Duel for Dominance. It's a uh, two cost instant, and uh, looks like Arlen fighting. Uh, I forgot his name. T guy, T, T, T series leader. So, it is Coven. Uh, choose target creature you control and target creature you don't control. Blah, blah, blah. Coven crap. If you have all the Coven crap, then uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on the chosen creature you control. Then the chosen creatures fight each other. This is pretty bad considering we have a better version of this for half the mana in just you know snow basically it's like oh do you have three snow anything cool it's indestructible so now you get to take out basically two creatures because they're probably gonna have to chump block it yeah this is a true fight with no boost unless you have coven and then it's it's a permanent boost but like it's only one one this just isn't good but then again it's still more removal for green and it's removal that can target a flyer so it's both good and not good, which I guess I could, you know, say, okay, settles right in the middle, whatever. 
Next up, oh, yeah, boy, Audric's back. Uh, it's a four cost two for Human Knight. And whenever Audric's Outrider or another creature you control dies, put a 1 1 counter on target creature you control. So every time the werewolves or zombies kill a human in the village people army, they get pissed off. I'm, I'm kind of getting that vibe from like three different cards that all do this. <laughs> One of the other ones is Angry Mob, by the way. Next up, we got Sun Gold Sentinel. Still don't really know what the Sun Gold is or whatever, but it'd probably help if I read the story. But it's a two cost creature, Human Soldier 3 2, which is already pretty damn good. And then when it enters the battlefield or attacks, exile up to one target card from a graveyard. Good, clear that shit out. Screw your zombies, screw your resurrection crap. And then it has Coven. Pay two, choose a color. Uh, it gains hexproof from that color until end of turn and can't be blocked by creatures of that color this turn. They're literally just describing protection. But I'm sure minus like one or two things, that's just extremely unusual. Although, I mean, we heard from them. They don't like how protection works and how confusing it is. So I just spell it out, basically, I guess, whatever. Uh, but then you can only activate this if you control uh, three or more creatures with different powers. But in general, this is an amazingly good card. Next up, Broodweaver. It's a four cost two, four with reach. It's a spider, obviously. And when it dies, create a one, two green spider creature token with reach. So you could uh, chump block a flyer twice, I guess. Although dragons will kill both of them. Next up, we've got one of the Ents from Lord of the Rings. I mean, Willowgeist. It's a one cost one, one creature tree folk spirit rare with <laughs> trample because of course. And then whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, put a one, one counter on Willowgeist. So we've got <laughs> graveyard shenanigans anti-graveyard countermeasures, and then anti-anti-graveyard countermeasure countermeasures. They think they're adding complexity. They're really just adding annoyance. I, I'm just, like I said, super not about all this graveyard crap. I hate it. What's dead should stay dead with maybe a couple powerful exceptions, and that's that. So anyway, whenever Willow Guys dies, you gain life equal to its power because of course you do. So you could like Tormod's your own graveyard and this thing's like a 10-10 on turn, who knows. I mean, if we're going to talk outside of standard, you could, like, traumatize yourself, but, I mean, good luck getting the mana to do so. I don't know what else is out there. Psychic Spiral, I mean, I think there's the Tasha's. You might be able to target yourself with that. I'd have to look at the wording on them, but I just feel like this this could be, like, this crazy combo, but you'd have to really set it up. And then he would just be Captain Lightning Rod, but when they kill him, you at least gain life equal to his power. So I, I can see why they did that, because he's, like, really hard to build up, and you don't want to just put all that effort into it and then get nothing. Next up, we got Downheart Mentor in uh, some kind of crazy showcase frame. Wonderful. And uh, it's a three cost, zero, four human warlock. And when it enters the battlefield, create a one, one white human creature token. And then Coven pay six target creature you control gets a plus three, plus three and gains trample tone of turn. But only if you have Coven. I don't like the unreliability of that. You can be sitting there with three perfect creatures and be like, yes, it's Coven time. And then one kill spell and you're off of Coven and can't use half of your effects or abilities. It, it just doesn't seem reliable to me. Next up, Wake to Slaughter. Uh, it's a five cost sorcery in black red. Choose up to two target creature cards in your graveyard. An opponent chooses one of them. Return that card to your hand. Return the other to the battlefield under your control. Are you kidding me? It gains haste. Oh, and then exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So you get to use it a grand total of one time, but flashback six. So this is like Whip of Erebos Jr. And I hated that card. Everybody hated that card. It was so degenerate, so overpowered, so impossible to stop, so broken, so obnoxious. To the point where I'd almost call this, you know, ob obnoxious too and should not have been printed. But this is so much lower power. I don't know. You could tap that stupid whip for free. Uh, but still, like basically almost a double resurrector. It's like a one and a half resurrector for five when you're only supposed to be able to resurrect one thing for five. I don't know, they get flashback six. I don't know about this. I don't know, I don't like it. Next up, we're getting to the end here. We've got Overwhelmed Archivist. It's a uh, three cost, three, two human wizard. And when it enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card, and then disturb four. Bring them back in uh, ghosty boy mode to get a 2-1 flyer. And when Archive Haunt attacks, draw a card, then discard a card. And if Archive Haunt would be uh, put in the graveyard exiled. So one of the few ones that's weaker when he's dead. Interesting. Although, okay, the triggered ability, but, like, whatever. Next up, we got Falconrath Perforator. It's a uh, 2 one four, 2 vampire, and whenever it attacks, it deals 1 damage to defending player. Doesn't really work in the Mabarment deck. You can tell they really phoned in the color red on the vampire half and just put it all into werewolves because, duh, Crimson Vow. Next up, Spellrune Howler. It's a 3-4 uh, in the funky frame. It's a werewolf, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Spellrune Howler gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. Nightbound, or as I like to call it, well, first of all, the wrong side of the card. Oops, because I, I didn't get the frame there. 
but also literally double prowess. You guys don't even understand how dangerous that is, but on the front side, we've got Spell Rune Painter. So uh, it's day bound, so you'd have to flip it tonight to get the good version, but uh, yeah, I drop it in for three. And uh, it's a human shaman werewolf, so okay. And then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you get plus one, plus one, so basically actual prowess. And then on the back side, double prowess. I don't know, man. These werewolves are looking pretty nuts. You cast a boost spell, and then right off the bat, he gets plus two, plus two, and then also you boost the creature, and then probably give it trample, and then probably double its power. Yeah, we're getting up there a bit. Just a little bit. And finally, the last card we got for today is Reckless Storm Seeker. It's a three cost two, three human werewolf, and, and Daybound, obviously, on this side. I'm actually going to do it in the right order this time. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains haste until end of turn. Nice. So it could be something you dropped in. That's kind of nice. Uh, I like that. And then Storm Charged Slasher. Uh, that is a 3-4, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus 2 plus 0 and gains trample and haste until end of turn. So, even bigger boost? I mean, you want to keep it on Nightbound, which is fairly easy to do with uh, werewolves. All you have to do is cast absolutely nothing on your turn, and if you are casting anything on your turn, it's either another werewolf, a werewolf booster, or an ambush, or a boost, or both, or putting all your mana into activated abilities. So, I mean, it's pretty easy to flip it tonight, but you have to wait and then, what is it, uh, at your end step or their next upkeep or something becomes night, I think. And then they have a chance to flip it back by casting two spells during their turn. But not everybody has access to that or needs to do it or wants to do it or ha would it be prudent at that time to do it. So, uh, I think werewolves are going to stick tonight pretty good and it's looking like they're pretty nuts. So I'm a little worried about that, but don't worry, we have a broken degenerate white board wipe. So, uh, don't forget that. And a little... Meta spoiler to fairies on a card in the next set of spoilers. I haven't even read it yet. I just was scrolling through and I'm like, oh, look, to fairy. Great. That, that's, that's what I needed today. So uh, I'm going to bed after I edit this, but uh, watch for more spoilers tomorrow and I'll see you guys next video.